Hello Cruel World. My name is Dr. Shaham Das. I'm a consultant forensic psychiatrist and I live and work in London. So this video is about life on a psychiatric ward. It's kind of a continuation from a previous video I've done recently about being sectioned. So I've told you how, where and why people get sectioned. This is further down the line. So what happens when a patient is transferred to a psychiatric unit? I'm gonna tell you about the atmosphere, about the patient mix, about the different staff members, uh, and crucially about how, what actually happens on these wards. So the process of treatment, rehabilitation, etc. Stay tuned, I hope this is informative. I hope you learned something. Maybe you've got family and friends who uh, you're worried about who uh, either are in a psychiatric unit or need to be in one. So in my training, I must have worked on well over a dozen psychiatric units. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis and on top of that on call we have to visit units to deal with emergencies so I've, I've worked in well over 50 probably closer to 100 units so I know what I'm talking about. The first thing I'd say is there's lots of different types of wards so for example I work in forensic psychiatry so I work in secure wards which are for offenders who are very high risk and very dangerous. There are also some wards that um, specialise in particular diagnoses, so eating disorder units would be a good example. Some wards depend on the patient's mental states, so PQs, psychiatric intensive care units, for example, are reserved for very agitated, very unwell patients, and they're there usually for a short period of time until the symptoms are controlled and then they're transferred to other wards for long-term rehabilitation. I'm going to tell you about general adult wards because those are the most common type of wards for your typical presentation. I'd say it's a rough mix of about 50-50 people who are there voluntarily and people who are detained under the Mental Health Act. People who are voluntary patients can technically leave whenever they want to, although in reality if staff are worried about them, for example if they think there's a high risk of suicide, then they might call the doctor to assess the patient at that point and potentially detain them under the Mental Health Act at that point. But like I said, that's only if there's a level of concern, it's not routine. So in terms of the diagnoses, it's quite variable. So on a forensic ward where I work, where the patients have a history of aggression or violence, uh, psychoses such as schizophrenia is very common. On general adult wards, on top of psychoses, you might have things like bipolar affective disorder, which involves periods of mania, or you could have somebody with depression who's come in after a suicide attempt, for example. Well, if you want to know more about these diagnoses, I've done tons of videos about everything I've mentioned, so go check them out. Often patients have comorbid issues like drug and alcohol use, but it's very rarely the primary reason that they're on the ward. So what is the typical psychiatric patient like? Well, that's a trick question, really. There's no such thing as a typical psychiatric patient, just like Everybody has different personalities, so does the average patient. Patients can have different symptoms that affect them to different degrees. So for example, you might have a few psychotic patients who are responding to voices or who are suffering from delusions or very paranoid, but that's not the norm, despite what uh, Hollywood might like to depict. You might have patients that are very withdrawn or paranoid or depressed. So they might be in their room, you, you might barely see them on a psychiatric ward or you might have people that are very well. So they might be uh, towards the end of their rehabilitation journey. They might be a couple of days from discharge, in which case they might not have any obvious or acute symptoms of mental illness. So what I'm trying to say is it's just a big mix of very different presentations. So I'd like to answer the question, are psychiatric units dangerous? But before I do that, let me introduce myself properly. My name is Dr. Shaham Das. I'm a consultant forensic psychiatrist. I assess mentally disordered offenders in prisons and in courts and in psychiatric units across the country. This channel, A Psych for Sore Minds, dissects a whole range of mental health topics, some related to offending and violence, or some, like this one, completely unrelated. So my USP, I think, is telling you, the viewer, about my own individual cases that I've assessed in real life. So I tend to release two videos a week, Generally, the Tuesday video is a long episode and I go into a lot of detail on a topic. I tell you about previous real life cases. Generally, the Friday video like this is a shorter video. It's like an overview of one particular topic. I hope it's educational. 
you should subscribe to my channel, otherwise you might miss out on a video. So are psychiatric wards dangerous? Well, I think it would be misleading to say they're never dangerous, but they certainly aren't like that all the time. You do get some patients that are agitated because of their symptoms at some times, but I would say that the staff and the protocols are designed to deal with it. So staff are trained in uh, control and restraint, Doctors can prescribe extra sedation or extra sedatives if necessary. Some wards have seclusion rooms to, to take people. It's like a locked room if they're extremely agitated. In terms of the members of staff, all wards have nurses on the ward 24 seven. There is a consultant psychiatrist such as myself, who's in charge of the patient's care. Usually there's a junior psychiatrist who does the more day-to-day -day kind of activities, who's on the ward on a more regular basis. So hospitals or wards should have occupational therapists, psychologists, and social workers. So occupational therapists help deal with activities, whether it's uh, setting up education sessions, helping the patients find voluntary work, or engaging in sports or going to the gym. Psychologists do talking therapies, that could be one-to-one um, -one sessions, could be group therapy, typically once a week. There's a whole range of different types of psychological therapy from drug and alcohol rehab to uh, relapse prevention. Social workers tend to deal with things like benefits for the patients or contacting their family. I say those, those members of staff should be there because I've certainly worked in poorly resourced wards where there just, just isn't those members of staff. There's only the skeleton nurses and doctors. So a typical psychiatric ward has lots of patient bedrooms. The ward itself tends to be locked, but the bedrooms aren't. So the patients can come and go as they please within the ward. There's usually like a big patient lounge with a TV. There might be a pool table, might be a games room. Uh, typically a psychiatric unit will have like a shared gym or there'd be like a cafe. And no, there is no pool, there is no bar, there is no jacuzzi, so don't ask. Good wards have staff that are full of energy, have some resources, the staff are present on the ward and they help the patient engage in activities to pass the time. Bad wards have none of those things. Personally, I've definitely worked in both types. So medication is obviously an important part of the average patient's rehabilitation journey. Patients can be medicated against their will if they're detained under the Mental Health Act. That's only done as a last resort and it's not a pleasant uh, process or experience for anybody involved. It basically involves physically restraining the patient and then nursing staff giving uh, injections which contain antipsychotic medication usually. So voluntary patients can come and go as they please. As the, the ward is physically locked, they might have to like ask a nurse to unlock the door. And section patients need to be granted leave by their psychiatrist, by their consultant. That usually happens once the consultant sees that the patient is settled, that they've not got acute symptoms, uh, that they're not a risk to themselves or other people. Generally, leave starts off as escorted, so the patient has leave with one or two members of nursing staff. If that goes well, then they have unescorted leave. So I'm going to answer the ultimate question, which is this. What is it like for the patient? What's the overall experience like? Well, I have to say that it's very variable. It's kind of like asking the question, what is school like? So some people would have hated school. They would have struggled academically. They'd have been bullied. Some people would enjoy school. They'd have made decent friends for life. Similarly, the experience of being on a psychiatric ward is variable. Some people find it a supportive and therapeutic environment and like a break from their life when they were at their lower step, when they were at the edge of a breakdown. Some people just hate the experience, so they don't like being locked up, they don't like being around other disturbed people. If I'm being brutally honest, from the patients that I've talked to, more have a negative experience than a positive experience. And that's actually illustrated really well in my earlier interviews. So I interviewed a man called Osama, one of my very first videos, who's actually a medical student. He was detained. He uh, thought that his admission was a lifesaver. I've interviewed a couple of other people, Lucy, a journalist, and also Ariel, a podcast host, who, who didn't have such good experience of uh, psychiatric services. But I think it's important to put the, to put the context into consideration. So. If you ask the average person if they enjoyed their ambulance ride, probably a lot of people would say no because they were in pain or they had broken bones at that time. Doesn't mean there was anything wrong with the way the ambulance was driving. When we see people, they're in crisis, they're close to breakdown. 
Sometimes they have no insight, sometimes they're medicated against their own consent. However, despite all of this, I'm convinced that some psychiatric admissions save lives. I've literally seen this. I've seen people that have come in who are close to suicide, get some support, get some treatment, get some therapy, just have a, a feeling that they're being listened to and cared for and they leave in a much better situation. Similarly, I've seen people that have come in floridly psychotic, get some medication, get some therapy and leave in a much better condition than when they came in. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative. Hit me up on social media. Feel free to get in contact. Happy to answer any of your questions. Until next time, stay euthymic and please remember, I love you.